Where did all my money go? That's the number one question, right? Raise your hand right now, wherever you are, or hit that like button if you're watching on Facebook. If you have found yourself asking yourself, where did all my money go? You get paid, you know that song from Sasko? As you get the money, it done, it done, it done, it done. Like you have no idea where your money went. And so when we talk about budgeting, we're talking about understanding where your money goes and making a plan for your money. We're also talking about setting financial goals for yourself, for your family, for your household. But I find that the biggest mistake that most people make when they are budgeting is not setting a realistic budget. So it's the new year now, and a lot of people are setting New Year's resolutions, right? You've been making New Year's resolutions, and I bet, I'm pretty certain that many of you watching right now have made a New Year's resolution to make a budget and stick to it, right? So you've made this, this elaborate plan, or maybe not an elaborate plan, it could be a simple enough plan, and you say, my New Year's resolution is to stick to my budget this year. I'm not gonna let my budget run away from me. But here's the mistake. You have set that budget without knowing realistically what you actually spend your money on. And so you've put the cart before the horse and you set yourself up for failure. So step number one in the budgeting process is actually to track your spending. Before you set a budget, I want you for the rest of the month of January, perhaps for some of February, to track your spending for a month. And today I'm gonna share with you my personal budgeting tips. You'll be getting some screenshots like directly from my phone. I'm gonna show you what my budget looks like. I might have to blur out some numbers, but I'll show you what my budget looks like and how I am able to accomplish my goals, how I was able to pay off my debt as well. Like credit card debt, geez, man, not that one hit me. I fell into those traps. I've learned from my mistakes and I wanna share those tips with you. So step number one, track your spending for one month. I want you guys to understand what you actually spend money on so that at the end of the month, you can look at a document or at an app and really understand where all your money went. You don't have to ask yourself the question feeling like it just disappeared into thin air. So there are good budgeting apps that you can use. The one that I personally have been using for several years now is called Home Budget. There is a free version and there's a paid version. The free version is, is pretty decent. I don't remember how much the paid version costs, but like I said, I've been using it for years. I've transferred it every time I change phones. It's the app transfers, you don't have to pay again. So whatever it costs, it was a worthwhile investment. So here are some screenshots from my actual home budget app. And you'll see the, the, all that uh, blue stuff blurred out. Those are, are the numbers from, from uh, my budget plan. So on this app, you see where you have expenses, you have bills, so you can put in your bills for the month and it gives you a reminder if you have a bill due. Uh, you can put in your income, which is something that you also need to track because many of us make the mistake of thinking that income is only our salary, and, but we get money other ways. So somebody might send you a remittance, uh, maybe you win cash pot, all of that you need to put into that income statement in your budgeting app or on paper if you're using a pen and paper. And then there's another uh, feature there called accounts where you can put in all your various accounts. So you put in your credit card, your debit card. If you have more, if you have a checking, a checking account and a savings account, you're gonna put those in. And you also have a cash account. So the cash that you have literally in your wallet, you're gonna put that in the budget. On the other side of the slide, you can see that same slide. You don't have to change it yet. You can see what the actual breakdown looks like. So you're gonna put, well, the app puts things into categories for you. So you have food and groceries, how much do you spend on uh, dining out? How much do you spend on groceries? It has utilities there, so light bill, water bill, cell phone, internet, the basics, medical expenses, car payments, toll fees, whatever it is, put it into the app. So every single dollar that you spend, I want you to make a note of it for, for this month at least. 
I've been doing this for several years, but for you, I want you to at least try it for this month. I know it can be a little bit time consuming. If you don't have the time to do it immediately, save your receipts and then do it at the end of the day and put that information into that budget so that at the end of the month, you know exactly where your money went. Now, the other tool that I use a lot, and, and let me mention, there are other budgeting apps too. This one just happens to be my favorite, and I haven't really looked at others much. There's one called Mint that works well in the United States. That one is developed by the makers of QuickBooks, which you may, may have heard of already. That's a, an accounting software. But Mint, the cool thing about it is that it automatically syncs, or you are able to sync it with your bank account. So whenever you make a purchase, Mint will automatically put those purchases into categories for you. You don't have to do it manually like in home budget or if you're using pen and paper. Unfortunately, it doesn't uh, sync with bank accounts here in Jamaica, but who knows, maybe in the future that will be a feature that's available. So like I was saying, the other tool that I use a lot is Google Sheets. And you may be familiar with Microsoft Excel, very popular spreadsheet uh, function, so you have Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel. I prefer to use Google Sheets, and let me tell you why. Google Sheets allows you, it has most of the functionality of an Excel spreadsheet, but it allows you to put it on your phone's home screen. So this is my phone right here. I don't know if you can zoom in. Are you able to zoom in? And you have, I have my budget right here from Google Sheets, and this is my personal budget on the home screen, and next to it I have the budget for my business. So I have two Google Sheets on the home screen of my cell phone, and I'm able to update these live. You know, in, I don't have to wait till I get home or get to work to, to use the, the desktop and to put in the information on Microsoft Excel. You can just do it right on your phone, save the app right there, and make those updates, and it updates across all devices automatically. So the way I use these two different things, Home Budget and Google Sheets in tandem, is that I use Google Sheets to plan. So I'm gonna make a plan, I'm gonna set my goals, my timelines, I'm gonna put in a column for estimated earnings and spending, and I'm gonna put in a column for my actual earnings and spending, so that's it coming up right now. This is what it, Act, this is my actual spreadsheet that I use in Google Sheets. I've set all the values to zero because you don't need to fasten I'm a business. You don't need to know, <laughs> you know how much money I'm making and spending. But these are the actual columns that I use, and you see that it's color-coded, and that's just for fun to make it a little bit interesting to look at. So I use Google Sheets now to plan, and at the end of the month, I'm going to check everything that I put in Home Budget app, and I'm going to put it, transfer that data into my Google Sheets to see you know, how we actually performed against the expectations and the plans that were set. So that's my sample budget. That's my gift to you for today. So that's step one, track your spending. At the end of the month now, the next thing that I want you to do is to analyze your past month's spending. Take a good, solid look at the things that you actually spent money on. Not what you thought you spent money on, but now you can see in black and white what you actually spent money on. You can see where your money actually went. So you make that analysis and you see, okay, I thought I spent $20,000 a month on groceries and that was my budget, but it turns out it's actually $50,000 on food and groceries. When you, when you combine uh, money for school lunch for the kids, dining out or eating out, uh, Burger King and KFC, groceries, all the little things, all the little snacks that you have on the road, all those little things add up. And you thought it was 20, actually turns out to be $50,000. And now you can set a more realistic spending plan for the months ahead and, and take it from there. And then of course you can also see where you can make cuts. You can see what are the things that you're spending unnecessary money on. You may think that those little snacks uh, it's just $20 here and there, uh, don't add up to much, they don't really count, and so you didn't even want to log them, but you did for the purposes of this exercise. But at this month, you realize you spent $5,000 on those little snacks, 
you realize, okay, I need to cut back on those snacks and that's probably going to be good for your gut as well, right? So now the third step would be to set a realistic budget based on your past spending, based on the trends that you have actually identified in your lifestyle because you have been tracking your spending. Step four now comes at the end of month two. So month one, you are tracking your spending. Month two, you have set your budget and you continue to track your spending. And now at the end of month two, you've set your budget and you've looked at where you, how you have performed based on your budget. And now you are going to reconcile. So reconciling simply means you are going to go through all the expenses that you had. So you're gonna pull out your bank statement. You can do this online. You're gonna pull, out that, pull up that bank statement or if you've been using a manual system, pull out all your receipts and you are going to, to compare notes. So you're gonna compare what you had in the app versus what's on your bank statement because you may have missed some things. Maybe you were in a rush when you made that purchase and you didn't realize you forgot to log that particular expense. So at the end of the month now, you're gonna reconcile your accounts, make sure that you have you know, everything how it's supposed to be. You're also gonna notice that there are bank fees that you didn't account for. Trust me, that's how I realized that I needed to switch banks. When I started doing this reconciliation process and adding up all those banking fees, I'm like, okay, this is not working out, I need to find a bank with lower fees. So the reconciliation process helps you to, to realize all the things that you may have missed. And I guarantee if you spend at least two hours a month on your finances doing this, so tracking your expenses, planning your goals, setting your goals for the month ahead, and reconciling your accounts, seeing where you can make cuts, you will see a difference in the, the, your ability to meet your financial goals for the year. So you're gonna get the hang of it. It might take a little while to get the hang of things. Now, step five is for you to set up a salary deduction or a standing order. So you want to make saving and investing automatic. So one of the things that you need to understand in realizing your financial goals is that savings alone likely won't get you there. You need to try to increase your income as well. So when you think about there's this pie and you have all these expenses, the pie is divided up. You have to spend this money on food, this money on utilities, this money got to school fees, this money got to bus fare, transportation, whatever it is and the pie just gets gobbled up before you get any of it. You need to get a bigger pie. And it's not as hard as you may think. So when I said in the app there is an opportunity for you to enter not just your expenses but also your income, you have to think of budgeting as, as two sides of the budget. You have your income and you have your expenses. And the same way your expenses can increase, you also have the ability to increase your income. So you can find a side hustle, you can dig within yourself and think, what am I good at? What are ways that I can improve my income? Can I sew? Can I make some masks and sell them? Sew school uniform? What are things that I can do to bring in additional income you know, on the side? And who knows, that may even become a bigger part of your hustle. Another thing that you can do is to start investing. And a big hurdle that many people find in investing is I don't have the money to start. I can't open this investment account because I just, I just can't seem to save up enough money to start. So make it automatic. Once you open that investment account or a savings account where you want money to be set aside that you're not going to touch, make that automatic. Set up a salary deduction so that at the start of each month that money goes straight into that account before you even see it. And guess what? Most times you won't even notice that money is gone. You just learn to live on the rest because what comes to you in your bank account or in, in that check that you get from your employer, that becomes the money that you expect and you learn to live on that. So make the savings and the investment 
automatic so you don't have to think about it. If you think about it, you're going to say, mm, I, I, I don't want to part with this five grand this month. I don't want to part with this 10 grand. But if you make it automatic so you don't have to think about it, uh, it's going to be that much easier to accomplish your goals. Now, after you get the hang of it, I want you to make a plan for the entire year. I like to plan months in advance. And you're going to plan for things like vacations, if you want to take a vacation. If you have debt that you want to clear, you're going to make a plan, put those debt payments in your budget. If you have car payments, if you have uh, expenses that are annual expenses, like motor vehicle insurance, you're going to plan for that. You can save towards it. And going back to the savings account as well, if you have that, that account that comes, goes from your, your salary deduction, goes directly to that account, make that a, an account that is not very accessible. So you might not get a debit card for that account. Or if you do have a debit card for that account, keep it at home. Don't keep it in your purse because then you're going to be tempted to spend that money. When you look at your, your statement, you say, whoa, 60 grand in the low. You're going to be tempted, right? So keep that debit card at home, and that way you're tempted, you're, your temptation, you're able to resist that temptation. So now another thing that you can try, if these methods are too complicated for you, you're not into the whole app thing, you're more old school, just try the envelope method. So the envelope method of budgeting, you, you may have tried this before. Uh, it actually does have a name, the envelope method. All you do is you take all your money. If you're somebody who deals more exclusively in cash than online, just take your money, set a number of envelopes, write in this envelope food, another envelope utilities, another envelope transportation, whatever the various categories are. You put the money that you've budgeted in those various envelopes, and when the money in that envelope done, it done. You know, that's just it. So it's a very simple, very rudimentary cash-based system for those of you who use cash a lot. But I think that using these, uh, these tips that I've given you today on budgeting will really help you to accomplish your financial goals. The more time you spend on planning your finances, the more money you will have at the end of the year to show for it, I guarantee it. I was able to pay off literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in credit card debt using this system, and I hope you can too. The end. <laughs> Ready for your questions? Sometimes you need to cover expenses without breaking the bank. Do it with a loan that's quick, affordable, and completely online. Get the money you need when you need it. Be an e -loan. To set up your... Continue? Okay. Once you have gotten the hang of it, and just start with planning that one month, but once you've gotten the hang of it and you see how, the, how your system works and you customize it to your own liking, like I showed you, I color-coded mine. You can color-code yours and your favorite colors if you want to or not, if you're a, a more plain person. But once you have done that and you are able to plan ahead and plan February, March, April, May, June, now you can say, okay, my motor vehicle insurance expires in July. Motor vehicle insurance tends to be on the pricier side of things. It's something that most people have to plan for. You, some companies allow you to, to stagger those expenses, but it does work out cheaper if you purchase the insurance for the entire year. So it would be beneficial to you to simply save the money over a period of time. So even though it's a one-time expense, you can start saving that money from now, from January. Put it in your budget each month, a little amount. So let's say the insurance is $60,000 for the year. It's now, that's July, it's due, it's now January. So you can put aside $10,000 each month. Put that, in, put that line item in your budget so that when July comes, and you can put that in your the, your separate savings account that we spoke about so that when July comes, you can easily access that money and you get the discount for paying uh, the full amount in advance. Now, what should I do if I spend more than I budgeted for? And this happens all the time, right? First of all, we want to avoid that by setting a realistic budget. 
in the first place. But unexpected expenses do happen. And all you have to do is adjust your budget. Budgets are flexible things. Even the government adjusts their budget. So they have something called the supplementary estimates of expenditure. That simply means it's a supplement to what they had originally planned. It's rare that they go an entire year without having to, to change their spending plan. So all you do is next month or at the end of this month when you've assessed your finances and you realize you were in the red, you went over on certain things, now you can adjust your budget for next month. Or if it happens this month and you've noted it, so you knew uh, you had a, an unexpected medical expense that you didn't plan for, you didn't budget for. Well, now you can go back and look at the other categories. Perhaps you had budgeted some money for recreation. Well, now you know you can't, you can't do that again. That's out, so that's, that's something optional. So all the things that you may have in your budget that are optional, you can you know, eliminate those. Other things you may need to reduce. So you have a particular budget for food. You know you just have to be a little leaner this particular month. It might not be an oxtail month. It might be you know, a, a chicken back month, not an oxtail month. So you can make those adjustments as you go along. And that's the beauty of tracking your expenses. You are able to detect, which is why I like the app too, because it gives you an alert when you surpass your budget. And then all you have to do is go in and make that change. So what's an emergency fund? And how should I use it? So an emergency fund traditionally should include six months worth of expenses. And that is a lot. I'm going to admit I have never quite been able to save six months worth of expenses in an emergency fund. But I do have access to funds in my investment account and, and other things and so forth. But it can be quite intimidating to try to save up six months worth of expenses in an emergency fund. What I have done, however, is set up an account that is, like I said, the one that I, I keep the debit card for that at home so I don't have access to it immediately. And I use that particular account, especially for car stuff and medical stuff, because those are the two things that tend to creep up very often. So something happens to your car, and all of a sudden it needs to go to the shop and you need, you know how these mechanics are, you need this part and that part and that just crept upon you. And so I would have that account and I can just use that particular card to pay for it and then it doesn't affect my regular budget. And so your emergency fund is something that you can use for that. Emergency fund is something you can use for medical expenses or anything that tends to, to pop up. So you want to have, I'd suggest starting with $100,000 and that, that's something attainable. That's something you can build up even in a year by saving 10 grand, like, what, like probably eight grand a month. You can build up your emergency fund in a year. And then eventually you can start building more and more on it using other tools like investing. Okay. All right, that's it. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure serving you. Check out kalilareynolds.com for other financial news you can use uh, in a way that's interesting and easy to understand.